Good afternoon, Lieutenant Colonel Ken Kerr. I'm here to talk to you about coffee. So everyone has had a chance to drink coffee at some point in their life, usually by this point, and everyone has had a method of coffee they like. Most Americans drink coffee, and everyone has a routine that they start off with. Today, we're gonna to talk about the methods of coffee preparation, and we're gonna specifically address using a coffee percolator device to actually prepare coffee. So the question I have for you is, have you ever been in a relatively austere situation where you may only have a gas stove and you're trying to figure out how do I prepare coffee? We've really gotten accustomed to coffee on demand. So my question here is, how many people here are coffee drinkers? Show of hands. All right, virtually everybody. How many people here have a coffee routine they do in the morning? They have a specific way. Again, yeah, just about everybody here. How many people here have ever actually used a percolator to prepare coffee? It's not something that's commonly done anymore. So let's talk a little bit about coffee on demand, what we're kind of used to. And that means that it's some method we have of getting coffee first thing in the morning. The most common thing we have is our pod type instant coffee device. You know, most people think of the Keurig actually. You, you know, put the pot in, got your coffee, and you're good to go. But what if you don't have that? Well, other people use the drive-thru. You go to Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks, McDonald's, whatever your routine is, and you know, get go get your coffee. And then I grew up actually using a drip type coffee pot, and that was the you know. Pour some water in the back, put the filters in, pour some ground coffee in, wait about 10-15 minutes and you got a pot of coffee and having the automatic shut off so you can actually pour it in mid-brew was a novel feature for my folks actually when that one came along. So those are different methods of produ uh, producing coffee and what we really want to talk about today is how do we use the percolator device to brew coffee and why might we want to use that but specifically how do we use it. So our overview Using provided materials, you the student, by the end of this, will be able to discuss and demonstrate the process of coffee bean selection, appropriate grinding, assembly and preparation of the coffee stovetop percolator device with a maximum of two instructions during the task. And uh, this is according to the student progress checklist you'll be provided with. So as we go through the lesson today, we're gonna to talk about coffee bean selection. We're gonna talk about hygiene, safety, the equipment that we're going to use. We're going to touch on the process of grinding coffee to the correct grind. And then we're, spe we're especially going to focus today on the assembly and use of the percolator type coffee pot. So let's jump in and talk about our coffee bean selection. So why would we want to use whole bean coffee, right? Most people don't stop and think about the fact that when you grind the bean, you are actually beginning the process of breaking down and degrading the aromatic compounds within the coffee bean itself. And those are things that actually give the coffee its smell, its flavor, and what really enhances the coffee drinking experience. Now, some people, they just want the caffeine fix and they're moving on, right? But for people who really wanna savor a cup of coffee first thing in the morning, especially when you have that moment to be able to really relax and enjoy it, you start to appreciate the value of the aroma and the process of preparing the coffee. And so we have different types of beans we can choose from. We have light roast and dark roast, and this is an example of a light roast, but that's a dark roast. And this is actually the same bean from the same region of the country that has been roasted according to a slightly different process to produce this difference between the bean. And the roasting process can enhance certain aspects of the bean, bring out certain flavors and such. So how the coffee is roasted is actually becomes very important to, to bring out the flavor. And then we also have to take that bean and we do have to grind it. And so when you grind the bean, you're gonna come up with either a coarse, a medium, or a fine grind. Now, typically when you're using the percolator device, you actually want a coarse grind, coarse grind. Uh, does anyone here drink espresso? So what grind do you think you might wanna use when you're making espresso? Traditionally, people will actually try and use a fine grind, but actually if you use a coarse grind when you're producing espresso, you'll find that you end up with a better cup of espresso. The, the real challenge of, of finely ground coffee is you end up with this coffee dust that can settle into your coffee. And it actually detracts a little bit from the coffee drinking experience. A medium grind is actually good if you're using a, a drip coffee type device. And you'll find that a lot of the 
coffees that you buy that are pre-ground are actually ground to a sort of a medium consistency. The art of grinding coffee uh, requires you to actually spend time, grind a little bit, check and see how coarse it is. If you need to grind a little bit more, grind a little bit more. And you'll kind of develop the knack for finding what is the correct grind that you need. And then of course, obviously, you can use pre-ground coffee. I'm not saying that you can't use pre-ground coffee, but in order to really get the experience, a whole bean is a good starting point to get a really good coffee, uh, cup of coffee. So we also have to touch on hygiene and safety because this is a food preparation process. We have to use appropriate sanitation, so hand hygiene is important. Wash your hands, use a hand sanitizer. And we're also using utensils that require sanitation to actually uh, go through the food process. So when you're, uh, when you're using your coffee pot, yes, you're gonna have boiling water in there, but that doesn't mean you can't, you, know, you, you still have to wash it before you actually use it. So make sure all the components they're gonna be using are clean before you use them. We also have to uh, think about the fact that it's a food prep, so whatever guidelines or instructions you have regarding the kitchen that you're gonna be in, you have to follow those guidelines as well. It should go without saying that hot coffee is hot, boiling hot. A lot of people may remember the story of the little, little lady who was going through the drive-through, had a hot cup of coffee, put it down between her thighs, the lid popped off, she ended up with a pretty bad skull. And so I don't like to have to go through what should be common sense, but yes, we're gonna be dealing with things that are hot and, and just to make sure nobody gets burned today. And if you do find yourself in a situation where you're using an open flame heat source, you need to understand that you also have a safety requirement of knowing where there's a fire extinguisher. So having a fire extinguisher available if you have an open flame heat source is important, or at least having a knowledge of how you're gonna put that fire out, like if you're in a campsite. So we've talked a little bit about the coffee beans, we've talked about the grind, we've talked about uh, hygiene and safety. Um, let's talk about the equipment that we're gonna actually use. So let's get into the, the uh, nuts and bolts, the beans, as it were, of the equipment we're gonna use. So first thing we're gonna to touch on is the coffee grinder. And here is my coffee grinder. It actually has a lid that locks on. It's got a cup that unlocks and you can actually scoop out just the right amount of beans that you need. And once you're done scooping out the right amount of beans you need, that locks in, the lid comes back on, the lid's gonna lock on actually. And once the lid locks on, I can actually set this to the uh, appropriate settings to get the coarse grind that I'm looking for and it'll automatically do it by timer. But if you have a grinder that doesn't have those features, just be aware that you push the button, it grinds for a little bit, inspect the beans, see how good a grind you got, don't over grind it. The next thing we're talking about is the coffee filter. Now the purpose of the coffee filter itself is to ensure that any of that fine dust does not end up drip down inside your coffee and that's the reason why we use the filter. And when you're using the filter, I'm gonna show you how this actually goes along with the basket as we go through the coffee pot itself. So here's an example of the coffee pot and I have actually my version of the coffee pot right here. You'll see they look very much the same. And uh, as we look at the coffee pot, you're gonna see that it has this device that comes with it and this is the stem. It's actually a pump and the way it works is that as the water begins to boil, this captures the boiling water underneath the water gets forced up through the stem, comes out the top, and then it drips down over the grinds within the basket. So once your coffee pot is filled with water and there are marks inside for where you're gonna to fill to, 10 to 12 cups for a pot this size, carefully place the stem down inside. You have to make sure that the spring is on the stem. That spring allows it to actually kind of move up and down and it actually functions like a pump. And then the basket that actually goes inside looks like this and you can see there's a hole inside the basket where the stem is going to come up through and you'll notice that my coffee filter does not have a hole in it. So during the demonstration you'll see how we actually take that coffee filter, stick it down inside and then actually we actually use our fingers to punch a hole through this so that it'll settle down with a hole through the filter once we're done and then that just goes inside the coffee pot on top. And then the last part is we have to have this lid, the basket lid that fits on top to actually seal the top. And finally, we actually put the clear knob lid of the coffee pot on and it should seal down tightly. And that clear knob allows you to monitor the process of your coffee as it's brewing. So we've talked about the equipment and gone through the process of putting all that together. 
Let's go into the demonstration and I'm going to show you the process during the demonstration of how we actually get all the bits together so we make that pot ready to be put on the stove, add the heat, and start brewing coffee. So please follow along as we go through the demonstration. So here we have the grinder cup and the coffee grinder. I have pre-measured out the appropriate number of beans for the grinder. That will be inserted into the grinder and then we will pour the beans into the cup. This particular grinder allows for preset of the coarseness of the grind, so I preset the coarse grind for approximately 10 cups and I can just start the grinder and have it run. take the pump stem and insert it into the pot. This pot has previously been measured out for 10 cups of coffee. There are marks on the inside for actually making that determination. I then take the basket, I'll carefully lift the filter and slide it into the basket. It is important to actually create a hole inside to allow the filter to push down over the top of the stem. So you can see that the stem now comes through. As we insert this into the pot, we carefully line it up We've got an example now of how all this goes together. I'm going to give everybody a handout so you can break into your groups and go to your workstations and you're going to start this process of going through all of that and preparing your coffee pot and get your grind and get all that put together following the instructions in the exercise plan. I want everyone to pay very close attention as we break into our groups and start this process. In about 15 to 18 minutes as my coffee pot heats up, we're gonna have a pause X, so keep your ears open. You're gonna hear me say pause X. When we have the pause X, I'm gonna bring everyone back and I'm gonna show you what we're monitoring for as the water gets hot to the level of boiling inside the coffee pot. So go ahead and break into your groups and get started on your exercise. I'll be coming around if you have any questions. So now we have a pause X, pause X everyone, and everyone come back together. And I want to show you the process that we've been monitoring for. And as you look, you can see that the water is beginning to boil inside my pot. So we actually see clear water percolating up to the knob in the top of the pot. So this is the point at which I want to set my timer. And we, for this size of pot, 10 to 12 cups, we actually want to time it for six to eight minutes. I've chosen seven minutes. So I set the timer for seven minutes and I'm going to use that timer to allow me to know that the water has been boiling for seven minutes. As that water boils, the water drips down over the top of the basket and it begins the brewing process. We've already got steam coming up that actually starts to release some of the aromatic compounds in the whole bean. So now everyone can return back to their workstations, continue on, I'll be circulating around. In about seven minutes, we'll have another pause X and I'll bring everyone back and we'll see the finished product. So go ahead and return to your workstations and continue the process. I'll be circulating around if you have questions. So pause X, pause X. Now I want everyone to come back around and we're going to see the process now that we've achieved the completion of the brew process. And what you see now is my pot is now boiling well. I have a nice brown color of the coffee coming up. I will then turn off the stove, being careful not to reach across the spout, which is putting out steam. I'll remove the coffee pot from the stove and now the coffee pot's been removed from the stove, once I let it rest for just a moment, it's not boiling anymore, we can go ahead and pour that nice, fresh, steaming cup of coffee 
nice brown caramel color coming out of there. The aroma is really, really strong. You can really appreciate that smell of good morning coffee, which is what we all really want to enjoy out of a good cup of coffee. So a question for you, uh, sir, is why is it that I can go ahead and just pour the coffee right away? Right? Aren't I worried about the coffee grounds spilling out of the pot into my cup? Why, why does that happen? Right, if we put the assembly together correctly, the basket lid is sitting on top of that, and that actually prevents the coffee grounds from escaping the basket. That's why we can pour immediately. Another thing to point out is that the contents in there are still very hot. So do not take the lid off or take the basket out because they are still boiling hot. We have to wait for that to cool a little bit before we disassemble. Go ahead and return back to your uh, stations, finish up, and as soon as I see that everybody has completed, I will uh, index and we can come back and we can uh, close out the session. All right, index, index, index. Everybody should be finished with their exercise. Looks like everybody's got a nice fresh cup of coffee they're being able to enjoy. If you don't enjoy coffee, that's fine. You don't have to drink it. If it's too late in the day, that's fine too. You don't have to drink it. I just wanna make sure everybody has a chance to appreciate this. So as we're standing around enjoying this process that we've learned how to make coffee this way, let's go through and summarize and review what we've done. We've used our provided materials and you should now be able to discuss and demonstrate the process of coffee bean selection, appropriate grinding, assembly and preparation, and making coffee using a stove top coffee, uh, percolator type coffee device. And this is according to our instruction provided in the checklist. So we've talked about the coffee bean selection and the reason why we wanna use a whole bean, ideally the difference between a light roast and a dark roast is affects the flavor and uh, aromaticity of the uh, coffee bean. We touched, touched on the fact that we have to use proper hygiene, uh, we have to observe safety, and we've gotten familiarized with the equipment that we're gonna use. We've talked about the grinding process and how we're gonna actually come up with the correct grind. And then we went over the entire task process of actually the assembly and the use of the percolator. So do we have any questions so far about this? Excellent. So it's really important to understand that as you go out into the world, there are a lot of different ways to appreciate coffee. And if you find yourself in that austere environment, you can actually use this process to make coffee if the drive through is not readily available. You can even, if all you have is a pot, if all you have is a pot and coffee and hot water and a heating element, you can grind up coffee beans, throw them in the bottom of the pot, heat it up to the right temperature, right period of time, and then let it sit for a second and just pour that coffee out, what's called decanting, the grounds will stay at the bottom, but that is a way to make coffee in an austere environment if you really want to make coffee that way. So I thank everyone for their time. Uh, please, as you're cleaning up, make sure you clean everything appropriately, make sure everything's put back away that's the way it's supposed to be. And if you have any questions, I'll be here for a little while longer, and please ask any questions. I wanna thank everyone for their time. Please enjoy that good cup of coffee. Thank you very much.